But uh, if you're going to NC. Welcome to our 29th episode of Apex Instant Tips, coming to you live every Friday at 9.05 Pacific Time for five minutes only from California. My name is Hayden. And I'm Anton. And Hayden, for me, it is still 12.05 Eastern Time. Uh, I'm back in Massachusetts, uh, but it's a good thing we've covered all the date and time stuff. Uh, we don't have to go back through all of that. Uh, but I understand that we are covering, covering the globe today in date and time. Yes, as far away as the two of us are, Anton, uh, we are joined by our friend and colleague, Plumman, who is coming from even, even further away. A welcome, Plumman. Welcome to Hello. the awesome Cinematic Universe. Hello, Where are uh, you uh, dialing in from today? I'm in Bulgaria, uh, and right here it is about 7 o'clock in the evening, so I'm pretty far away. Yeah. Well, as we uh, often say, the, the show is about not about quality but about lack of quantity so plamen um i understand that you will be showing us uh something that i can always make better use of my uh my ui skills sometimes come under fire by some of my colleagues so perhaps by the end of the day today i'll i'll have some tips on, on how to do that a little better well don't worry uh, most of the database developers are lacking those skills and me too <laughs> so uh, luckily for us, uh, we have uh, sometimes UI designers to help yeah, us so with the design. Let's go ahead and, and share your screen, Plumman. Yeah, please. So what you see on my screen right now uh, is a mock-up that was created by a UI designer. And our goal as an Apex developers was to reproduce that beautiful design into an actual Apex application. And there are different parts of this mock-up. For me, the most interesting one is the chart. How do you think, is it possible to do it in Apex? Well, um, my hope is that the designer has done all the hard work for me and all I have to do is copy that code number there uh, and paste it into some declarative entry in the Apex charts and I'm done. But um, it, it is intimidating because that chart doesn't look like any of the charts from the Apex sample uh, chart application yeah i think well, they've done hard work at least i hope yeah that's that's a great design i agree but let's see how it looks like in apex by default so <laughs> here is the actual application it doesn't look like the mock-up right uh there we go yeah 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 it is, it is something different but what can we do about it uh, i'm going to show you right now uh some well and, and let's not neglect to start our timing oh yeah sure Let's do the tip in five minutes. So let's go to the designer. And if we go to our chart attributes and scroll all the way down, there is a section called JavaScript init code. So, so I, can't, I, can't just, I can't just use the font family and stuff above the declarative stuff. I'm going to have to get in and actually do some work. Well, you can uh, change the font and you can change the color. But other than that, the other options are not that easy to reproduce uh, with just the declarative options. But have you ever used the JavaScript init code section? Uh, yes. Um, and the, uh, the, the help that is provided there is a, is a great way to get started. But um, it's, uh, it doesn't really tell you how to go further than the options that are already there. Yeah, exactly. You are right. Uh, this is a great way to start. And if you copy paste uh, this code snippet right here, you will get some results. But unfortunately, it doesn't give you the full power of uh, what you can achieve. And what you can achieve is powered by Oracle Jet because right now, uh, every chart that is rendered on the page in, in an Apex application is done using the Oracle Jet framework. And it is a very powerful one. And there is lots of documentation. Um, so what I would do, and let me change the condition for that region. It's a copy of the previous one. Nothing is changed except for the JavaScript code. And here it is. It isn't too big, but it is good enough to change the style and 
produce exactly the same look and feel. Well, I, I do hope you're, you're going to explain how you wrote that, because that doesn't look that easy. <laughs> yeah, first, uh, it doesn't look. But let me show you something. There is uh, a page called Oracle Jet Cookbook. And if you go to that page, and we'll share the link later, if you go to that page, you can find hundreds of examples of different charts. All of them are used in Apex. And you can play around with the properties. So let's take that one, for example. It is a pie chart. But if we increase the inner radius, and maybe you can see that it is going from 0 to 1. Nice. Yeah, it looks like better and looks like yeah. similar to what we want to achieve. And what Very I do cool. next is I look for that specific property in the JavaScript that is provided uh, in this example. And you can see that we have a pi inner radius right here. So if you copy that property and search on the documentation page, you will be able to see that uh, there is uh, a property that we can use to style our chart. And it's exactly that property, which is called pi in a radius. It is inside of style defaults section in, mm. the, in the documentation. So if I go here, you can see how many options I do have. And now the, the radius is uh, just one of them. Ah, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, we're, yeah, it, we're calling this this JavaScript code, and in fact, it is JavaScript code, but it's it's doing very little when it comes to any kind of logic, right? It's just it's just a way to apply settings. Uh, no, actually, um, you is can uh, look for yeah, they are event handlers. So uh, okay, every time something happens uh, with your chart, um, you can uh, do something with JavaScript. So it is very powerful. If you if you see my scroller, see how small it is. <laughs> I can scroll all day, and the documentation is not over. So this is how powerful this documentation is. Very once, powerful. Once stuff. you get the idea, yeah. Once you get the idea of how to find the properties you need, you create amazing stuff. I tell you. Nice. And so I, so let's let's see what it looks like now. Let's go ahead and reload the page. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, totally the big different. reveal. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. So, so I and think that looks exactly like what was commissioned by the designers. It does exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Well, I think we've hit the uh, the five minute mark right on the money. And I guess what I'd say is um, the tip itself is when you're doing anything with uh, with charting in Apex, you really want to look at the Oracle Jet documentation. Is it? Would you say that's the the, the tip? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you're dealing with uh, charts, go and see the Oracle Jet documentation. If you're dealing with calendar, check the full calendar API. So Oracle uh, Apex team is using a lot of external libraries to produce uh, some beautiful user interfaces. And those are just two of the libraries used. OK. Well, I think right. um, we have hit our five minutes. And I want to make sure that uh, I'll stick around to answer any questions. Probably won't be able to if there are questions on UI. But uh, I'll, I'll stick around anyway. Hayden and Plamen, you have a few minutes? I'll stick around, yes. All right. Well, we'll invite anybody that came in to just stay for the five minutes um, to go ahead and ring the bell. Subscribe. Other, subscribe, like, whatever you Tweet about us. There you go. Um, um, but I also, um, while we're waiting on any questions, I do have a wisdom of the week and a um, what I will call a uh, fun fact. So this week's wisdom of the week is um, that every time I write a line of code for a client, I feel a small sense of failure. Um, and I know that that, that kind of contradicts our, our tip of the day, uh, but it's true. I, one of the things that I, I really like about Apex and is about how declarative it is. And I, in the past, if I used the declarative options to set a font or a color or something, 
I was pretty confident if Oracle changed the underlying library, they would remap it for me. Um, right. And now that I see I've got to go in and do this advanced JavaScript, I'm a, I'm a little bit disappointed, but I'll say when I looked at it, it it was almost a whole bunch of name value pairs that were going in there. Yeah, in this case. So, um, but if one so, day um, Oracle were to uh, disavow Oracle Jet, um, you might have to rewrite that. That's right. Or you at least have to translate it somehow. Um, yeah. Uh, if you have uh, an existing chart, Oracle, uh, Oracle Apex is, will try to, to reproduce it uh, when you migrate your application. And that's exactly what happened when they switched uh, from any chart to Oracle Jet. They migrated the the charts. They did. The and it's a lot. It's, I think it's a lot easier to do when it's declarative. But what, like I said, what I saw there was largely name value pairs. So there, there might be some reasonable translation to happen. And and I don't think Oracle is going to disavow it, uh, Oracle Jet in any in any way. But um, like I said, I. I, uh, I feel a little bit of a sense of failure either for myself or for Apex the tool when, when I have to do something that's not declarative. Um, yeah, every, or, every line of code you write is a code you have to maintain, is a line you have to maintain. Right, and if there's a bug in it, it's immediately identifiable as my bug. Uh, I have a, a colleague that sometimes when he's on a team and has to introduce himself and what he does, his answer is I'm, I will spare the name and I write bugs and sometimes fix them. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so then that's certainly true of all of us. Uh, we can be really great uh, developers, but we're going to write a bug here and there. So, um, well, I, as I promised, I also have um, a fun fact. I presented this recently to some folks, uh, and I was as a as a brain teaser, but I was told maybe it's better as a fun fact. Um, so here we go. If you were to put uh, a string around your waist, just the right amount of string around your waist, um, it, would, it would be right up against you. If you were to then take that string and add one meter in length to that string and put it around your waist, it would be a little bit like a donut. It's my, it's my transition from our tip, the donut aspect. It would be like a little bit of a very thin donut or a hula hoop around you. And it would be some distance away, I don't know, maybe half a foot, something like that, away from you. But you could certainly see it, right? Um, yeah. So imagine you did the same thing. You took a string and you put it all the way around the equator of the Earth. Let's assume that it's perfectly you know, spherical. And you put this string all the way around the equator of the Earth. And then you did the same thing. You took it off and you added one meter to it, to the string, and you put it back around the earth. Obviously, it would hover above the earth some amount. But any, any, without doing any math, what, what's your thought, Hayden? How, how, much would the, how much would it hover above the earth? I feel like it would be like a fractional, like... Imperceptible. Infinitesimal, yeah. Imperceptible, yeah. It turns out... It doesn't matter the object you put it. If you add one meter, it still hovers about a half a foot above it. What? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, right? If you were to put it all the way around the Earth and then add just one meter to it, it would still hover about six inches above the Earth. It's crazy. Amazing. So, there's your fun fact. <laughs> that is a fun fact. It's uh, unrelated to the circumference that you started with. Okay, I will have to ponder that. Yes, and if if it turns out that I'm wrong, I'm going to be really embarrassed. But that's uh, <laughs> it, that's it, it. It reminds me of the of the puzzle that you gave with the elephant in the in the truck <laughs> and, and the flies. The flies. Oh, yes. the Actually, it was with flies uh, in the truck, but flies. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Well. Um, I think that is our show. Any uh, last comments, Plumman or hey? oh, uh, So no audience questions about the uh, tip? I, I haven't seen any so far. Um, we've I, got I have a question. Oh, excellent. Yeah. So um, Plumman, how uh, long did it take you to uh, come up with the ultimate settings that you um, landed on to, to achieve the correct aesthetic? Yeah, yeah th that's a good question. Um, well, I first uh, tried with the Apex documentation. It wasn't that rich. <laughs> so 
uh, I uh, jumped into some examples uh, with Apex applications. And there is one very good uh, sample charts application. And I recommend everyone go there first. Check if you can find what you're looking for. And if you cannot achieve that, and you cannot do it with the declarative options, then go to the Oracle Jet Cookbook. And when you are happy with uh, the results there, just find the properties into the documentation. That's it. But ultimately, how long did it take you? Well, for me, it took uh, two or three days to, <laughs> to come up with, uh, with, this, uh, with this idea. But for you, it's, uh, it's already here. So <laughs> you can follow the steps. Yeah, yes. I, I wonder as well, is it the kind of thing that is a reasonable request to make of the designer to say, hey, our engine is Oracle Jet. Could you give me the settings? Is, absolutely, you absolutely. Yeah, you could uh, tell them to do it. Uh, I don't know if it would be difficult for a non-developer to, to go to the documentation and look for all the different uh, properties because not everything is included in the cookbook. So some of the options are, are not even known to, to the developers. So it's a tricky question. You can tell them to, to look for some examples in the Jet Cookbook. Yeah, that's an option. I think I might go that direction. Um, excellent. Uh, well, thanks, Plemon. I definitely enjoyed having you on, on uh, Apex Instant Tips. I think it's a great tip. I'm certain that I will make use of it uh, in the future. Yes. Let's hope so. Excellent. Uh, very powerful. Yeah, I agree. Well, I guess until next week, uh, you can do all the things you're supposed to do, like... Like, subscribe. Send letters to your parents, all those things. Well, I'll see everyone next Friday. Bye. Bye.